Hi, I'm Palmer Williams Jr. and we're here today to pretty much not only just interview but to uh, share the testimony of one Miss Brenda Coleman. And by the end of this, you will know exactly why we're here and why you need to know this woman. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, as you may not know and you know now that um, Ms. Coleman actually is a stage four colon cancer patient and she is actually in recovery now. Now, would you like to tell us what type of colon cancer did you had and uh, maybe start the story on uh, how this all came about? I was diagnosed with uh, metastatic colon cancer and then it was staged as stage four mm -hmm. because it had um, traveled to, it started in the colon and traveled to the lymph nodes to the uh, liver and to the lungs. Now for a lot of people that are viewing this, uh, they don't understand that usually when someone is diagnosed at stage four, that is the uh, stage just before it's a finality. Uh, that's what a lot of people believe, but right. I just don't believe like that. I know, that's right, <laughs> obviously because you're here today to talk about it, because you were actually diagnosed and it was January of? It was January 2014 when I got this diagnosis. Mm, I wanna ask you, um, all the while all this is going on, you're working a temporary job. I'm working a temporary job. And you now are in the hospital, in the emergency room, and we know that the cost for that is like enormous. So were you actually insured at that point? I was not insured at that point. Mm. That was what told me, that was the indicator for me as to which hospital I need to go to. Mm. So because I'm unemployed, I need to go to a certain hospital. Now let me ask you this, did that lead to any kind of apprehension or anything about even going to the doctor I knowing did. that you I didn't have a, insurance? I had a lot of apprehension. I wouldn't even call an ambulance if I couldn't walk because right. I didn't have insurance to pay for it. Um, let's back up to 2013. Now. I understand uh, you were watching television and you actually, with all of the different uh, campaigns for and against the Affordable Care Act, that's when you were introduced to it and you decided to act upon seeing if you were qualified for that? All the campaigns were running and they were saying, hey, if you don't get some, if you don't go on this um, site and choose some insurance, there's going to be a penalty. So I thought, I don't know how I'm going to pay for this, but I'm going to go on here and get this insurance. I'm going to apply. And sure enough, I applied and I got approved. With the Affordable Care Act, what happens is that the government kind of subsidizes. It's a subsidy. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. The government subsidizes your payment. Mm -hmm. So you get a subsidy every month and then they subtract that from your regular payment and then you pay the difference. Let's back up a little bit. You have uh, temporary employment, uh, an illness that uh, now is considered uh, uh, pre-existing, and so now you're still able to get affordable health care. I got affordable health care even with the now pre-existing condition. Um, I'm still working this temporary job and um, I was able to get um, an insurance card that, that did not discriminate against me. So when I go to any hospital or any doctor's office, they don't know what my condition is. They don't know what economic condition I have. Mm -hmm. So thankfully, with the Affordable Care Act, I was able to um, now be a card carrying, you know. <laughs> mm, member. A card carrying member. You sound like an NRA member. <laughs> uh, I understand that you have actually enrolled in Affordable Health Care Act, as well as some programs that were, I guess, enabled you to be able to keep your home. The Affordable Care Act actually happened in 2013, mm -hmm. okay, but prior to that, there was the uh, loan modification. Um, I actually got that in 2010. Mm -hmm. So they modified my loan for me, um, and they um, took all the past due payments and put them at the end of the loan, and then reduced the interest rate down to 2%. Wow, 2%. 2%. At that type of rate, I'm thinking maybe I should refi, <laughs> but uh, that's uh, that's a wonderful rate to have for you. Now, how how long had you had this home? Um, how long have you had this? I had far? it three years prior to uh, the the modification. So, is it safe to say, had it not been for those programs, where would you be? I would be homeless, I'm sure, because mortgage companies want their money. Now we understand that you're going to um, continue your treatments, but uh, with an alternative type of treatment that uh, I believe that you're going to uh, journey to Arizona and it's a three month uh, process right. and I understand that you're raising money and I think uh, you have a little under one third of it that has been raised if I'm not mistaken that's a praise report so to speak mm -hmm. and, and uh, there's a certain uh, number amount that you have to meet or, or match in order to get this treatment do you right. care to elaborate on that so, so yes that I want to talk about the um, 
the mal effects of chemotherapy. They, it just, it tears down all of your red blood cells, your white blood cells, your hemoglobin, your platelets. I mean, everything is just shot. Mm -hmm. Everything is just, uh, and, and, and the, the amount of weakness that happens. Um, I have some neuropathy uh, to the fingers. I have some neuropathy to the feet. Um, and explain to the, to the viewer that the neuropathy means some nerve damage. Nerve damage. Right. I can't even feel my toes. Wow. Um, and then if I put my hand to my face, my fingers to my face, I can't feel them. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that, that's the, uh, one of the effects of the chemo. I decided to look to see what can I do alternatively mm -hmm. to just the chemotherapy and is there a way to actually get to the root cause. I've had a first opinion, a second opinion, a third opinion mm -hmm. about how to treat this thing. Mm -hmm. And so with all those opinions, I did find a, um, a treatment facility in Phoenix, Arizona, mm -hmm. and I uh, actually made a visit to there and talk to the doctors to see what treatment plan can you give me and what's going to be the cost of it. Right. And so um, after my visit there, I did find that they did recommend 12 weeks of treatment. Mm -hmm. And uh, that 12-week treatment plan is going to cost me $96,000. Wow. And uh, with me working part-time um, and not really having any resources right now, mm -hmm. I can't get the help unless I can you know, make an appeal for somebody to help me get the help. I want to say this. I have fought privately this battle against cancer uh, without sharing it to too many people. Um, I've used all my resources. I've used every um, possible um, bit of, of cash that I've had, and um, I've just never been the kind of person who knew how to even ask for help. But today, I realize that because the the, the amount is so tremendous. I need to raise a hundred thousand dollars, roughly, and uh, I need I need help from people to do this. I've got to open up myself to receive the help. And today, I know that the quality of my life will be restored. My immune system will be rebuilt. Uh, my blood cells will learn how to regenerate again and not die and I will be able to do the things that I've been called on this planet to do. Um, if I could just get the, the people who have a heart to want to see somebody win against cancer, if you want to see somebody win against cancer, it's me. I want to win this fight. I can't do it without help, though. Thank you for whatever support you can give, however small, however large. I'll be so grateful.